obtained from the Office of Admissions and the Office of Graduate Studies and Research this year a total of 1,163 students accepted offers to our various programs in the faculty. This would break down into 688 and 416 accepted offers to undergraduate and graduate programs respectively. To this number, I advise you add the accepted offers for one of our new flagship programs, history and journalism, music and performance studies, which have attracted, as at this morning, 50 for history and journalism and 11 for music and performance studies. The steady annual rise of accepted offers it's an encouraging commentary on the faculty's rebranding campaign to boost student enrollment. At this point, can I ask all new students to please rise and for the rest of us to applaud them. Please rise. I very profoundly thank you, the new students, for the confidence you have to contribute to your intellectual and social consciousness during the period of your pupillage in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. As you might have known from the various forums that you had been a part of since you came in, the university now operates a triple A strategic plan. This provides the context for my address this morning. This plan is a roadmap and is designed to enhance Caribbean development by providing greater access to tertiary education, facilitating the university's agility to respond to changes in the globally competitive tertiary education market and promoting greater alignment between the needs of Caribbean society and the university academic offerings. As the Times Higher Education Latin American University rankings has now recognized and for quite some time now, the university as the number one ranked university in the Caribbean with over 20 registered universities competing for placement in the ranking system. In the wider region of Latin America and the Caribbean, however, the university has been ranked in the top three with over 2,000 registered universities competing. It is my interest to remind you new students that you have been admitted into an excellent global university rooted in the Caribbean. And to this, we are all proud. And to this, I hope you'll also be very proud. This is also the context within which the Faculty of Humans and Education is seeking to achieve excellence and competitiveness as a learning community. My overall point to you is that we are not a provincial university. We are a global university. And we seek to compete with the best in the world. And we seek to prepare you to compete with the best in the world. This should be your outlook. This should be your aspiration from the very start, beginning today. It is my second interest to remind you that the sustenance and enhancement of this global image is the responsibility of both students and staff in the university. It is my responsibility. It is the responsibility of my colleagues academic. It is the responsibility of my colleagues administrative staff. 
It is the responsibility of my colleagues, auxiliary staff. But it's also your responsibility as undergraduate students, your responsibility as graduate students to ensure that we not only sustain this image, but we do everything to enhance it, that we do nothing to jeopardize it. This should be your interest. This is our interest. Within this faculty, the advancement and management of your social and academic well-being, as you seek to play your part in the sustenance and enhancement of this image, will be undertaken by the School of Education, headed by Dr. Marcia Renford. Marcia, could you rise? In the Caribbean School of Media and Communication, this is also the responsibility of Dr. Livingston White. Could you rise for recognition? In the Institute of Caribbean Studies, this is the responsibility of Dr. Sonia Stanley Naya. She here? In the Department of History and Archaeology, Dr. Enrique Okenbi will fly the flag. In the Department of Literatures in English, Dr. Rachel Mosley Wood is in charge. In the Department of Language, Linguistics, and Philosophy, Dr. Ingrid McLaren holds the charge. In the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures, Dr. Nina Bruni flies the flag. In the Department of Library and Information, Dr. Rosemary Heath is in charge. <laughs> Dr. Rosemary He, formerly Associate Dean for Marketing, is acting in place of Dr. Stewart, Olet Stewart, who is on sabbatical leave. Could I ask my colleague lecturers who are here to please rise? Coordination of the faculty is done through the faculty office, headed by my humble self. I'm a Nigerian by birth, and now a Nigerian Jamaican by citizenship. In the discharge of my responsibilities, I'm ably supported by Dr. Saran Stewart, Deputy Dean for Undergraduate Quality Assurance Matters, could you rise? <laughs> Dr. Aisha Spencer, Deputy Dean for ICT, meaning Information Communication Technology Matters in the faculty, and Undergraduate Admission um, Leave of Absence Matters in the School of Education, could you rise? Dr. Joseph Ferguson for postgraduate matters. Joseph. What is Joseph? Dr. Nicole Plummer, Vice Dean for Marketing and Outreach. Nicole? <laughs> Mrs. Sophia Hills Johnson, Faculty Administrative Officer. She's outside. If, if she's, she's close by, could she come in, please? She's not close by? Could you, could you fetch her for me? Given our determination to enhance the global image of the university, we have made very conscious efforts to rebrand 
the Faculty of Humanities and Education as an excellent and competitive 21st century university. New students, you've joined us at a time when we are far advanced in this process. And this is why I chose to speak to you on this very matter. You are coming to a faculty that is trying to rebrand itself by introducing many more new programs designed to ensure that you are job ready, that you can be job creators, that you have a certain degree of self-confidence in your ability to be self-reliant and not to rely on paid employment as the only source of subsistence. We did so by undertaking a number of initiatives, including the introduction of new multidisciplinary degree programs. BA in Music and Performance Studies I spoke about, BA in North American Universities. And this is in keeping with our determination to ensure that we are competitive in the 21st century. Plans are well advanced to introduce yet another BA program. The title, as it is, might be changed in creative writing and publishing, among others, during this academic year. These programs are notably flexible, job market responsive, as well as relevant to national, regional, and international socioeconomic, sociocultural, and political needs. Whilst being cutting edge scholastically, they have been designed to equally provide students with workplace industry experience through internships and other related out-of-classroom activities. As a faculty seeking excellence and competitiveness in a globalized, knowledge-based economy that is in a state of constant flux, our ultimate aim, as I said before, is to produce graduates for a lifetime of jobs to produce a job in a lifetime. Please note, to train you for a lifetime of jobs and not for a job in a lifetime. Why? The global economy is in a constant state of flux. It's in a constant state of change. This change is driven by international political forces as well as technological forces that run faster sometimes than pure market conditions. What do we do in that circumstance? What we do in that circumstance is not to be fixated on one job you can't afford to be. You can't afford to think that you have to be a professor and you have to be a professor for life. What do I mean? If you are not here today, the Faculty of Humanities and Education will close down. If it does, what am I going to do? Unless I'm sufficiently flexible to be able to find job elsewhere, that is going to be catastrophic for me economically, and for my family. So I am telling you from the outset that bear in mind that we are going to be training you for jobs in a lifetime and not for one job for life. Yeah, um, I've just been reminded that the faculty administrative officer, Sophia, I just wanted to make sure that everybody recognized who you are. She is supported in the faculty office by a team of administrative officers. <laughs> Let me also take this moment to introduce to us a colleague who just arrived from South Korea. As I said, we are rebranding and we are recently introducing Korean language, and we have the opportunity of receiving our colleague, Dr. Kim.
You're welcome. The second plank, the second plank of the ongoing rebranding efforts of the faculty revolves around student development as well as improvement of the learning environment. This is because the question of teaching, the question of learning, and the question of student development cannot be separated nor considered in isolation from the adequacy or inadequacy of the learning environment itself. Let me give you one example. The absence of technological support for teaching could combine with inefficient teaching methodologies to ruin good programs. So what have we done? You would find as you go out, and this is part of our rebranding efforts, that except for two classrooms, all classrooms capable of sitting between 50 and 100 students have been outfitted with multimedia facilities. But there is something that I particularly take pride in, and I mention it to you today. This faculty is particularly unique because of those two huge iconic trees outside. You would have seen that benches are laid out, concrete benches are laid out. Some capable of accommodating in the way they are arranged, 10 students at a time. Some five students, some two students. Very close to these benches are electrical outlets. These electrical outlets are there for you to be able to charge your smartphone, to charge your laptops, and because within that vicinity, connectivity is very high, this provision is intended to encourage out of classroom learning. It's one facility that you would see here that you wouldn't see in any of the other faculties. It is our hope that these facilities would help you to develop, to develop academically and also to develop socially. Departments as well as the faculty have acquired Zoom licenses that would encourage online meetings between your classroom lecturers and our colleagues outside of the Caribbean and within the Caribbean. And it is also intended to facilitate your interaction with your colleagues outside of the Caribbean. Dogs, for instance, if a club wanted to have some sort of online conversation with your North American colleagues, this can easily be facilitated. And this is part of our attempt at making sure that you are part of this global community that we are a part of. Finally, as a student-centered faculty, I wish to say in closing that you, the students, are the most valued segment making up this learning community. Why did I say so? I just indicated to me, to you, a while ago, and it is with no sense of triviality. If you are not here, this faculty will close down. If this faculty closes down, neither myself nor my colleagues will be here. Now, if that is the case, if that is the case, you must be the most valued members of this learning community called Faculty of Humanities and Education. We are aware of that. We are aware of the fact that we are here because you are here. Therefore, we know that we have to enrich your learning experience. To do that, we are asking you to work with us to create that environment of mutual trust. Commitment to high more ethical standards and professional practices. 
along these lines, we pledge, and I pledge on behalf of my colleagues, we pledge, and this is my closing statement, we pledge to guide and facilitate your learning experiences throughout the period of your pupillage in the Faculty of Humanities and Education in order to ensure you are happy ending and happy fulfillment of your dreams three years from today. Thank you and God bless you. At this time, I'm going to invite to the podium, the microphone, Dr. Angela Gordon Stair, who is the director of the counseling unit for the UWI's Health Center. Um, she will provide an overview of services offered at the counseling unit throughout your tenure at the university. Dr. Stair? Thank you so much. And on behalf of the entire University Health Center team, I want to congratulate you all and to welcome you to UWI. As we say here, this is your place to shine, and therefore you are being given an opportunity that many others would die for. So please make use of it. I just want to, to um, highlight a couple of things. First of all, to say the University Counseling Unit is part of the University Health Center. We are a unit within the University Health Center. How many sequelites are in here? Okay. How many people from Rex Nettleford are in here? How many from Preston? Nobody? And usually Preston is well represented in the Carmack program, so that's unusual. Anyway, the reason I ask that is that if you walk between Mary C. Cole, the back of Mary C. Cole, and Rex Nettleford or Preston or any of the halls, Leslie Robinson, any of those halls down there, or if you're going down to the Mona Bowl, you have to pass the health center. So we are between Mary C. Cole Hall. If you're coming from Irving, you're coming you're traveling south on Gibraltar Campway, you have to pass us to go to the post office. So just to give you an idea of where we are located. As part of the University Health Center, we also require that you use your health insurance cards. Those will, you have paid for your health insurance, you will pick up those cards or collect those cards from the SAS office, which is in the main administrative building, and you need to present with those cards. The cards are swiped. You don't pay anything out of pocket unless you come without your card. If you come without your card, you'll be charged $2,000 per session, and that's dirt cheap because you're pay paying close to $14,000 per session outside. So, the moral of the story, get your cards. The counseling unit staff, the counseling service staff, there are five of us as psychologists, PhD or master's level psychologists, and one consultant psychiatrist. It's a confidential service. Many of you I know think when you hear counselors, you think of your experience, which for some people wasn't so nice at high school. These are not high school counselors. These are not primary school counselors. And very often your experience at the primary school or high school was oftentimes colored by 
what you what you your you think counseling should be that is somebody telling you what to do that's not what we are here for we are here to help you to develop to grow to experience this transition in your life in a meaningful way we the kinds of issues we deal with run from the purely academic meaning we tr we try to help you to manage yourself and your time in a way that is meaningful to you so that you can achieve what it is that you want to achieve many of you are coming straight out of high school some of you have been away from formal education for a while so whichever group you fall into you, this is a transition for you many of you are accustomed to sitting your final exams at the end of the academic year your first final exams are going to be in 13 weeks so guess what it starts now you will have your mid sessionals round about october and those are going to be very very important to your final exams so it's about getting with the program from now from now you know putting on the big girl and big boy underwear and getting it done one of the things that your dean said which i just want to emphasize is that you are the center of things here and therefore nobody it's not in their interest as he said without you we don't have jobs and therefore it's not in our interest for anybody to fail but sometimes we can't save you from yourselves so you decide what's going to happen over the next 13 weeks coming back to the counseling service just to mention that as i said before it's a strictly confidential service we cannot release any information without your written consent and as i tell people your story isn't good enough for me to lose my license to practice and having been at this for over 40 years i think i've seen it all and heard it all and been a part of it all for a long time your story is not good enough so if you heard your story out there you had put it on facebook or instagram because our walls don't talk if there is a problem come in and see us we cannot help you after the fact when your faculty advisor suggest to you that you go and see one of the counselors please, please take up the offer coming to us after the exams exam results are out and saying well my grandmother died and guess what grandmothers have a way of dying three four five times when the grandmother died we asked for proof of grandmother's death not only do we ask for proof of the grandma grandma's death we also ask for you to be able to justify the relationship between you and grandma did you live with grandma was grandma the person responsible for raising you like i said we've been at this a long time so we usually know the tricks in the trade but telling us that after you fail the exam we can't help you because you have already sat the exam waiting until two days before the exam kind of hard for us to help you except to try to calm you down in order to write the exam but whatever the situation is please seek help the onus is on you and remember when we when our clinical director sends a letter to professor warboka saying that the student is unfit to sit the exam that's all he knows and he takes her word for it 
why you are unfit to, see, to sit the exam is not in that communication. So you need not fear what it is. So we have the academic issues. We have the personal issues. We have the boyfriend, girlfriend issues. We have the parental issues. We have the issues that are a little more deep and a little more um, impactful for some and yet not so for others. Issues to do with abuse, issues to do with um, marital issues, we also see those. Parent-child issues, we see those. And of course, we run the entire gamut to more men uh, mental illness, including those that re may require hospitalization. Seeking help is your way of saying, I intend to take care of myself. When you're out on the field exercising, when you're ensuring that you're getting enough sleep, because guess what? All nighters is not for everybody. Nor are marathons. And when you decide you are going to give up the junk food for three weeks because you're going to try to eat more healthy, and you're not going to be eating only Kentucky Fried Chicken and, and, and other snacks and bun and cheese. It means that you have made a decision to take care of yourself physically. And once you're taking care of yourself physically, you're taking care of yourself mentally. If you find yourself shutting off from others, staying in your room, whether you live on hall or you live away from hall, remember that's not a good thing. Speak to someone. If you find that there is no, you don't feel comfortable speaking to anybody else, come in and see us. We are so set up that you will get a same day appointment for what we call a screening on a Monday to Thursday. 10 to 11.30 and 2 to 3.30, Monday to Thursday. It's not done on, on Fridays. If it is an emergency, we will see you the same day. And an emergency is what you define as an emergency. Even if you think getting a splinter in your finger is an emergency, we will ensure that the nurses see you. Okay? So remember, to make use of the services, it's here for you. It's not a part, your, your, your medical records are not a part of your academic records. And gentle people, please, when you come in with a letter from the doctor, please do not hand it into the faculty office. The faculty office is not, this is not high school, the principal Professor Warboka is not the principal, and please don't take it over to the principal's office either, because we have seen that happen. Your medical records all belong in the health center. Your, the faculty does not have access to your medical records. It's not part of your academic records. For those who may have had issues prior to coming into university, come and visit with us. Let us know what that is, who you are seeing, if you are on medication, what medications you are on. So that one day if Professor Warboka or one of your faculty members call us, we can pull a file and know exactly what is happening. Okay, so remember, apart from the microwave, which is your second best friend when you get into university, your best best friend is your, is, is your lecturer. Get to know them. They can be wonderful people if you take the opportunity to know them. And they are the ones who are more, most likely that to be the ones you are going to feel comfortable in reaching out to. And another, another 
benefit of getting to know them. In three years' time, you're going to need a recommendation. Okay, you don't want them to write, this person was in my E300 lecture of 300 students, and therefore, I am going, I want to. That's all they want. You want them to be able to say something about you. So have a wonderful year. Remember, we are in the health center. And just, I want to end by just bringing to your attention the whole business of sexual harassment. The university does not tolerate sexual harassment between students, between students and staff, staff harassing students or students harassing staff. If you are faced with such a situation, Dr. Debian Chambers, one of our counselors, is a sexual harassment advisor here on the Mona campus. Please come in and see her, and she can advise you how to take a complaint through the system. Have a wonderful year, and remember, October is here. Thank you, Dr. Stair. So just um, some quick housekeeping stuff. We are, as you heard from Dean, we are 600 plus large. That means that MITS is nicely providing um, live feed in rooms N2 and N3. So if you're a student standing and you can't be comfortable, go ahead to N2 and N3 and you can be nicely seated and all that good stuff and still see us live to, to get all the current exciting information for orientation 2019. All right. So moving on, we have the overview of scholarship opportunities by the Office of Student Financing. We have a change in the script. Um, Mrs. Gay Lawrence will not be with us, but we have Ms. Natasha Campbell to do the presentation, and then we have Kevin Brown to do any questions and answers. Can I ask them both to come to the podium? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the University of the West Indies on behalf of the Office of Student Financing. I hope that you will have a wonderful year. And for anything relating to your financial needs, whether it's just questions, you can visit us at any time. Um, so on to our presentation. Now that you are here for orientation, I know that you would know all the costs involved with school. So for those of you who are not aware or don't remember, you have tuition costs, which is 286897 You have miscellaneous fees, transportation. For those of you who live off campus, you will need to ac account for your transportation transportation to and from university. You will also need to account for your meals. Um, so if you live on a hall, you would need to account for your meals, whether you're preparing it or you're purchasing it. Um, we encourage you to make a budget to itemize the expenses that you have and as well as to list all the sources of income that you have. You will also need to make preparations for your books and your supplies. No. All right, so these are the scholarships on screen that are still available. Can I see a show of hands of students who applied for scholarships? So we are in the process of shortlisting for the awards, as in we just started. So we would have sent out an email to acknowledge your application. We are in the process of shortlisting for the awards. However, we have three new awards that we don't yet have enough or any applications for. So we're asking you, please submit your applications, especially the Audrey Roberts Scholarship. This is new. Um, it's for a student coming into UA, registered in any program in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. You just need to have a B average coming out of high school. 
the value is $250,000. As you can see, the deadline is September 20. So you have a little time to submit the application. You will need a recommendation from your high school teacher, principal, guidance counselor, any of those. The information is on our website. Again, the deadline is September 20. There are also two other awards that are still open for humanities and education students. There is a Hastings Needy Grant. The value is 40000 The deadline is August 31. Um, just the OSF application is needed for that application. Is there anyone here from Glengough? Did you apply for the... All right, so there is a scholarship specifically for you. It's called the May Mercer Scholarship. The value is $250,000. The deadline... Deadline is August 31. So I look forward to receiving your application during the course of this week. If you are having any challenges with anything... Visit us and let us know so we can assist you. Good. All right, so we also have general financial assistance. So now that you are here, you may have found the tuition, you may have found the miscellaneous fee, but you are having issues with the lunch money, the bus fare, getting the books. We have a program called General Financial Assistance. That's an online application. It's on SAS, so in the same way that you register for your courses, I know you may not know how you do that yet, but in the same way that you register for your courses, there's an option there that's called OSF Financial Aid. You can apply for books, meals, small cash grants. So for cash grants, you get a maximum of $40,000 to assist you with your daily expenses. Um, so maybe you applied for a student loan and you don't have the money to pay the insurance, the processing fee, that can go towards it. Um, we all traveling. Um, we also offer book grant, maximum $25,000. So we give you a memo to take to the bookshop to um, purchase your textbooks. You take back the receipt to us and we clear that bill. Um, there's a meal subsidy where you get a meal card for the entire duration of the school year. It is used at five concessionaires on campus, and the value is $300 per day. I know it might not be a lot, but it helps towards purchasing your meals for the day. And you have that card for the entire school year. So if you get it tomorrow, you keep that until May next year. And these three things, they are not based on academic performance. They are solely needs-based. Okay, so there are other opportunities for financing your education. Um, how many of you know about JAMVAT? Okay, so JAMVAT is a program offered by the government where you volunteer 200 hours for the academic year and you receive 30% um, of your tuition costs. So they give humanities and education students 30% of the cost of tuition. But for other students, they get a maximum of $350,000. All right, so there are some students who have tuition of 28000 US, 10000 US. Those students will get the $350,000. Or in humanities, you have the digital media, the animation. Those students will get $350,000 if they apply, complete their 200 hours. Also, there is a PATH grant. So students who were beneficiaries of PATH in high school, there is a grant offered by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. The application period is August to October. The application form is on our website. It's two pages. All the information you would know about, it's information about you or your family. The only thing that you need to remember is you need to get the family identification number, the registration number from the parent or guardian who has the PATH account with the ministry. That's all you'll need to put on the application. That's not information about you. Um, the value of that is $100,000. Again, deadline for that is October. <clears throat> 
So you can take the application form to us and we will submit it to the ministry on your behalf. If you have any questions your, during the course of the year, you may visit us. Our office is on the first floor of the administrative annex. So we're upstairs, billings and receivables. Our email address is on screen. So you can send us an email. We respond to emails within 24 hours. And our telephone number is also on screen. So you can call us at any time. We're open 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. Um, unless we're on Christmas break. <laughs> All right. So I know many persons don't want to talk about the Students' Loan Bureau. But the Students' Loan Bureau is a good way to pay your tuition if you have if mommy and daddy don't have it to pay. Um, there are two types of loans. There are targeted loans. That's the loan that you, the student, access and repay once you're finished. Um, the deadline for that loan um, was May, no, June. So what is open now is a pay-as-you-study loan. So if mommy and daddy or your guardian wants to take a loan on your behalf, student loan will lend them the tuition cost. They'll also lend the housing fees, actually. So it's a loan that your parents pays back while you are at school. Um, that loan is open all year. So if you have any financial difficulties with the hall fees, and you can ask mommy or daddy or your guardian to look into the pay-as-you-study loan on your behalf information for the Student Loan Bureau, it's on screen, so if you have any questions regarding student loan, you may contact them directly and they will respond to you. If you are having any challenges with Student Loan Bureau for any reason, you can send us an email and we will reach out to them on your behalf. Are there any questions? My name is Kevin Brown. I'd like to welcome you all. Right now, no, we don't have such facility. But I can advise you to come to the office and then maybe we can speak and find out what we can be done. Okay? Thank you so much. Have a wonderful year. I cannot emphasize in presence. Thank you so much, Natasha and Kevin. That was extremely informational and helpful. The number one reason why students do not complete their degree is because of financial aid problems. It is not because you fail an exam. It is because you cannot afford to stay. What you just heard is that there are designated scholarships for each and every one of you that go untouched and untapped from humanities and education. I do not want to process any more LOA leave of absences because you cannot afford it. Please exhaust all your options, hence why we have the Orientation Village, we have the Office of Student Financing, and the student was that is in Gulf, um, are you going to apply? Absolutely, fantastic, okay. I may have pronounced that very wrong. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Dr. Vivette Milson White, senior lecturer of the, from the Department of Language, Linguistics, and Philosophy, is going to come to us to discuss um, and understand better something that is critical to your graduation, which is the faculty's English Language Foundation courses. Dr. White, thank you. Good morning. I join the others in welcoming you, new students, to the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus specifically. The English Language Foundation courses are important to your planning, 
not just for your sojourn in the institution, but for the dynamic world of work that the dean mentioned in his address to you. So, what are these courses? They're courses in academic literacies, and in fact, before you graduate, you might hear us referring to them as academic literacies rather than English language foundation courses. In these courses, we take you through the requirements of writing and reading at the post-secondary level, and we have you addressing thinking, speaking, listening, and viewing, and how those intersect with reading and writing. In this faculty, the courses that are important to you, FAUN 1016, Critical Reading and Expository Writing in Humanities and Education. All students in Humanities and in Education need to take this course, which is offered in the first semester, like now. It's going to start on Monday morning. And then the students who are going to be doing humanities only majors also need to take another course, FAUN 1002, Language Argument. That one is offered in the second semester, that is in January. Students who are coming into the university are expected to have certain English language results from regional examining bodies or other examining bodies. We expect that you would have a grade one in English language at the CSEC level, or if you did GC, you have an A in GC English language, or you have grade one or two in Cape Communication Studies. If you don't have any of those things, you are required to sit the English language proficiency test that is offered through my department or some students take an English language proficiency test from other entities like the open campus. Once you sit and pass the English language proficiency test, it means that you have satisfied the prerequisite for the course, though you did not come in with the required results from your external examination. And if you have satisfied the prerequisite, you go ahead and register for Found 1016. That is the first semester course that you need to do. If you sat and failed the English language proficiency test, that is you got a grade that said 2 or F, it means you have not satisfied the prerequisite for taking the first level English language foundation courses and you therefore need to register for another course called, well, the code is found 1019, Critical Reading and Writing in the Disciplines. This course is not a one semester course. It runs from September through to May. So if you are a student registered in education, you're on the education side of this faculty, and if you have to take Fountain 19 because you sat and failed the ELPT, once you have completed the two semesters in that course, you would have satisfied your requirement for Fountain 1016. That is the English Language Foundation course that you are required to do. If you are doing a humanities major, however, you have to do some budgeting. There will be changes in your program because Fountain 19 is equivalent to Fountain 16 only. You will therefore have to work out when you are going to do language argument, that is Found 1002. It is offered in the summer, or you might decide you're going to wait until your second year, second semester to do it. But whatever you do, it means you need to put that into the planning that you're doing right now because these things have financial implications. I want to underscore that you cannot just go ahead and register for Fountain 19 because you realize, oh, I don't have the one in CSEC English A, I don't have the one or two in Cape. You must have taken the ELPT and failed it to be allowed into Fountain 19. 
And if you missed the test in August, the next one is going to be late November or early December. So if you're in this situation, you have to do even more budgeting because Fountain 19 begins in September if you have to take it. How are the classes arranged in these courses? We begin on Monday morning coming up at 8 a.m. The courses have a lecture and a seminar. So as you understand the registration process a little bit more, you'll know that when you go to register for your English Language Foundation course, you register for two things, a lecture and a seminar. There are in and out of class assignments in these courses, as well as consultations that instructors hold with students outside of class. You have to do individual and collaborative work in these courses, so plan on that. In Fountain 16, for example, the weighting is almost equivalent, so you need to think about who you are as an individual and who you are as a team member as you approach Monday morning when you're going to be starting these courses. The lessons are arranged for incremental learning. Remember I said the focus is on reading and writing at the post-secondary level. It's not on English grammar. We happen to be doing the courses via English, so there are certain expectations that you will come in with a knowledge of English grammar and we expect to see you display your proficiency in English as we handle reading and writing required at the university level. So if you need to do any kind of reviewing, etc., go ahead and do that because English grammar is not the focus. The focus is on reading and writing, but using English as our base for doing so. Because the learning is going to be incremental, we expect that you will attend all of the classes. So you need to have some visiting plans. The public holiday coming up on October 21 in Jamaica, for example, will affect students who take classes on a Monday. So for your English Language Foundation courses, you will need to plan which other day will I go to my class for that week because you still need to get the learning. And then you heard Dr. Steer mention that when you have challenges regarding illnesses, people dying, other extenuating circumstances, these things can affect how you perform, whether in class or on a test or assignment coming up. And so you need to make those plans as well for how you'll visit the health center in time for the information to get back to your instructor, etc., so that you do not miss out on anything and are able to complete your course in the time allowed for doing so. The coordinator for Found 1016 and Found 1002 is Mrs. Lilith O'Connor Brown, her room is 22 on the block behind us. If you have any challenges with the instructor that you will have for your seminar, she's the person that you should go to see with regard to 1016 or 1002. For students who might take 1019, the coordinator is Dr. Carolyn Dyche, also on the block behind us, but room 11. Again challenges with your seminar or something that your instructor cannot address, you will go to that individual. You're planning, you're thinking about how to finance your education, you're thinking about the investment that you have made in higher education. It might not be you who made that investment, perhaps it's your family, perhaps a community, perhaps some individual that you might not even know, perhaps the government of your country, Whoever made the investment, I trust that you will make it work for you. You're going to realize success if you actually keep pace in these courses and profit not only from the academic learning, but the discipline that will come from the way that learning is organized in the courses so that you can take that with you into your other courses and again, into the dynamic work world that is awaiting you. All the best in your sojourn on this campus. Thank you, Dr. Milson White. Um, I'm just reminded by the Dean that this is critical information. We have a lot of students that at the end of your three years or four years with us 
will have a very good GPA, but because they have not um, satisfied all the requirements for their foundation courses, you end up back in our shop and our doors. And so please, please heed her suggestions and advice, and please register. Um, you'll see in a couple, next 20 minutes, you'll be registering for your courses. Please register for whether it's 1016 or 1019 immediately for this semester to get it out of the way or the ELPT test. All right, and how do you get to manage all of this? You utilizing our IT resources and what you will become very familiar with or or via the um, black, um, course website management system. We have Mr. Peter Watson, who is our IT guru for the faculty, and he's gonna come in and give us some words of wisdom on how to properly manage our IT resources and lend advice on those things. Mr. Watson. My name is Peter Watson, and I'm the IT representative for your faculty, the department that is responsible for ICT services is called MITS, Mona Information Technology Services, and they're centrally located adjacent to the main car park. The MITS help desk, as it is commonly called, is open on weekdays from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m and it's open on Saturdays 9 to 5 and Sundays 9 to 4.30 p.m. The MITS help desk at during week nights from 7 to 10 and on weekends only caters to online support so at all other times you can visit. Now the main contact number for MITS is 876-927-2148. may also con contact us by email, helpdesk at umona.edu.jm. We also offer live support chat at the website support.mona.ua.edu. And you can also send requests via WhatsApp chat only at the following numbers, 876 4992291 or 8765520926 Mits is also on the popular social media platforms and we invite you to subscribe to Yui Mona Media on YouTube where you can access live streaming of campus events as students, you are assigned an ID number, and that ID number is the username that you will use to access all your platforms that are online. So this account, there are certain criteria that must be met whenever you change your password. So note that your password expires every 120 days, it must have a minimum of eight characters. It must contain at least one number, and you cannot repeat any of the last three passwords used. Whenever you need to get your password reset, what MITS would do is send an email to your personal email with a randomly generated password that you are required to change. As stated, this is your main account and you use it to log on to campus computers and you use it to access online systems. Every student is assigned an email address. So if you're John Brown, your email is john.brown at mymona.ue.edu. If you are the second John Brown registered at UE, your email address would be john.brown02 and so on. So this account is also used to access the student administration system and RVLE, which is the 
learning management system used by the campus. You can also use the student portal online, which once you log in, you will be able to access SAS and Orville without having to log in again. UA also offers Microsoft Office 365 to students. What this gives you is access to the entire Microsoft Office suite, which you can download on up to five devices. You can contact MITS to get access to Office 365, or you can visit the website 0365 sign up at mona.ue.edu and enter your UA email address. You will get one terabyte of cloud storage with this platform and you can contact me if you want to get assistance with reading your UA email on your smartphones. Now one of the major resources available in the faculty are the computer labs. The main computer lab is called Ashcroft Computer Lab and it is located it is located in the School of Education building on the ground floor. Now, apart from Ashcroft, there are a number of teaching labs in various departments. And the Ashcroft lab is the only lab that offers an open lab where there are no classes held. And this computer lab is open from Mondays to Thursdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m and on Fridays from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the lab also offers printing facilities. Now the campus has a wireless network that has a naming convention, Mona Connect. That is the SSID that you will see on your wireless devices. Please note that when connecting, you might see Mona Connect iTest, which is the same network. So if you are trying to connect and you notice that Mona Connect has a weaker signal than Mona Connect iTest, you should connect to Mona Connect iTest, knowing that it's the same network. The name iTest will soon be dropped, but for now, bear with us as we make those necessary adjustments. Now the wireless network is it's an open network which gives you direct access to the internet. These are a number of places in your faculty where you will find that you have access to this network. On this block, which is the end block, all the classrooms are equipped, as well as on the old block, on the O block, the faculty courtyard behind us and as well as most of the, the teaching labs might also have wireless access in addition to having wired computers. Please note too that the computers on the campus are outfitted with Windows 7 and Windows 10. And for the most part, we, we are still using Office 2013 and in some locations you will see Office 2016 being used as we transition. That's it. I wish you all the best in your studies. Thank you for listening. All right, so only one more presentation, I promise, okay? Um, Mr. Shanoi Henry is your Guild student representative and he's going to give you all the good jazz and 